is, is in this location because there's a seasonal stream comes out of Dartington Woods, which is the one side of me here, uh, through down here, that's the other side of here, and back into the Dartington Woods there, uh, which usually only runs in the winter. It obviously makes this a wetter site, uh, an obvious place to have a pond. Um, so I dug this about 10 years ago or so. Um, it's quite, it's relatively deep, it's about two metres deep in the middle, comes up in shelving layers, so there's different niches, you know, for different plants and so on. Um, and there certainly are some edible things in there and so on, but as much as anything, the pond is, again, it has system functions to benefit the whole system. So it obviously helps support a big population of frogs and toads and newts who all eat a lot of slugs. Um, and they, those kind of uh, amphibious animals like um, conditions, you know, under the, the, the thick growth over the whole soil surface. And so they're in there along with ground beetles which also like those conditions and control the slugs and snails pretty well. I don't really have many problems with slugs and snails. Um, the pond also helps support bats. Uh, so there's a very good bat population here. I have bat boxes in these two pine trees but there's also bat boxes in North Woods in various locations. Um, and so there's a lot of pipistrelles around and they are you know, all bats are very good predators of uh, things like fruit tree moths, so you know, like codling moth of apple and plum moth. Um, so if you have a good bat population, you won't get problems from things like that. So you now I have apple trees, I don't ever get codling moth on them, uh, which I put down, at least in part, you know, to bats. There may be other predators involved, but I think bats have a certain a, a big part in that. So. Um, so I don't, I don't harvest from the pond intensively, you know, I basically let it look after itself. It's a fairly wild area, really. Uh, the pine trees themselves, um, so far when I've been describing, you know, the, the function of different plants, uh, you know, it's been this is edible or that is edible or has a particular use. Um, but um, the, actually the main function of these pine trees really is to provide uh, a, a shade area for sitting underneath in summer. Because you know, forest gardens are, you know, places where people want to be, uh, you know, whoever's garden it is, they want to come into their garden, they want spaces to relax in and stuff, so we have, we sometimes have picnics here and parties and stuff like that, it's just a nice place to be, so that really is the main function of them. Having said that, of course, pine trees have numerous other uses, um, apart from, you know, valuable timber and so on, um, so I mean, one of them is that the, the new shoots you can see on the pine trees uh, here, um, are very high in vitamin C and in a lot of parts of the world those are used to make uh, a herb tea which is very nice um, treated a bit like a you know, like a spring tonic in, in many parts of the world um, uh, and also um, uh, I've been tapping these uh, pine trees for some years now for pine resin the one on the right there I've tapped for the last five years and I've just started tapping the one on the left this year is what you can see down there um, and pine resin is um, I, I'm doing I do that not because I can't live without pine resin I could live without pine resin but uh, it's it's really interesting to show people that, that it's a simple process and and that uh, pine resin is a sustainable source of complex hydrocarbons um, and you can make anything out of pine resin that you want to out of oil um, you might have to go a slightly different chemical route but you can do it uh, and because of the price of oil you know over the past few few years going up and up and presumably it will gradually continue doing so um, there are already things now that it's not economical to make out of oil that are made from pine resin instead um, so commercially pine tapping pine trees is a big worldwide business mostly where labor is cheap as you'd imagine uh, so until quite recently it was still in Eastern Europe uh, but now at the moment it's mainly in China uh, but you can tap any pine trees, you don't have to be in a particular part of the world to do it. Um, uh, and uh, basically the tapping procedure involves removing a section of bark, the outer bark and the inner bark. The inner bark is, uh, on these trees, is quite thin. Um, that's inner bark. It's about four or five millimetres thick, um, soft uh, material which is underneath the outer bark, to get to the wood underneath and the, the resin seeps out of the wood basically and you start off with a small face like that and work upwards week by week uh, making it slightly bigger and bigger and going on all summer. So 
um, the, the resin seeps outwards, you collect it, and then commercially that's distilled. And if you distill pine resin, uh, you get a liquid, which is turpentine, and you get a solid left, which is rosin. And then both of those have a lot of direct uses, but they're also used to make a load of other things. And increasingly, you know, other I'm not suggesting there's enough um, you know, pine trees to fuel the world's cars, because there aren't. Um, but you can, you know, you can use turpentine as a fuel. You can mix turpentine with vegetable oils and you get a fuel you can use in diesel engines. So, I mean, you, you could use it as a fuel. And I know people who do, on a, you know, on a farm basis, but there's, you couldn't on a worldwide basis, you know, it's, there's not enough pine trees to do that. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, in, it's interesting from that aspect. Um, the resin, I don't bother to distill the resin, but in fact, I use it when I'm inoculating um, logs with mushrooms to grow on logs. Um, so um, I'll explain that process in a minute because I'll show you the top half of this tree actually snapped off in a storm. You can see the top, the jagged top there, almost exactly two years ago uh, and is just lying over there the other side of this, the, these uh, uh, branches. And uh, I've inoculated that with mushrooms so I'll show you what I've done there.